This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how you can create this simple grime art sort of effect using GIMP. And if you'd like to learn more about how GIMP works, be sure to check out the GIMP series, which is a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the major tools and features in GIMP, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So getting started here in GIMP, the first thing you're going to want to do is just open up a photograph. It could be any photograph you'd like. The example I'm using here is a stock photo that I downloaded from uh, the internet. Uh, you can use any photo you'd like though, and you, be, you should be able to follow along with the tutorial just fine. So what I want to do first is create a new layer on top of the subject layer here by clicking the button that says create a new layer and add it to the image. I want to leave all of the defaults as they are and go ahead and click OK. It should be a transparent layer on top of the image. And I want to click on the subject layer down here. And I want to bring the opacity of that down a little bit just so I can see what I'm going to be drawing on top of it a little easier. I'll bring that down to about 55. This is based on whatever image you're using. This particular image right here looks pretty good at 55, so I'll leave that as it is. I'll go back to the new layer up top here. And I want to grab the paintbrush tool, which is over here. I want to use a nice solid fill brush like that and I want to bring the size down. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a few times. I want to zoom in on the face. If you want to move the page around you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. And what I want to do is bring down the size of this brush. You could, you could bring the size down by pressing, pressing the left bracket key or holding it or you could bring the size up by using the right bracket key. So I'm going to bring it down to about that, much, to about that size right there. I'm looking for actually no, a little smaller than that. You can test it out by clicking and dragging. If it looks a little too thick, you could just press Control Z to undo it. I'm going to make that a little smaller. I think maybe three. No, you know what? I'm just going to use. I'm going to use 2.5. See how that looks. Maybe two. All right, that right there. That's the sort of thickness I'm looking for right there. And once you have that set. Um, I'm going to be using just the default colors up here, which is black is the foreground, white is the background. I want to come down here to these tool settings where it says smooth stroke. I'm going to enable that. And I want to set the quality to 45 and the weight to 1000. And that's going to allow us to create nice smooth strokes as we're drawing the drips. Because the first thing I'm going to draw here are some drips coming off the face. So I'm going to just click and drag to manually draw a drip coming off the face here like that. Back up like that. I'll come over here. I'll come down here and draw another one. Maybe this will be like a double drip, like that. And then I'll come up here, draw another one. The drips that we're drawing right now are just ones that are coming off of the face like this. And I'm going to draw a couple coming off of the, uh, the sunglasses up here. I'll draw one like that. And then maybe another double one down here. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. What I'm going to do now is draw a border going around the face. So I'm going to start up here. I'm actually going to start with the sunglasses. I'm going to draw a border going around the sunglasses here. And then I'm going to draw a border going around the rest of the face like this. And as you're drawing this border, just make sure the lines do not cross through the lines of the drips that are coming off of the face like that. And once we have the outline drawn, I'm going to draw in some of the features here, uh, the nose and the mouth in particular. I'm going to come down here. Oops. I'm going to come down here and create some border lines to represent the facial features, particularly the nose. And then I'll create one for the mouth as well. I'm going to start out with the inside of the mouth right here, just going along the border edges like that. I'll create one for the lips going outside of the mouth like that. And if you don't like how a stroke came out, you could just hit Control Z and just do it over again like that. Like I wasn't happy with how that one came out. So maybe try this again. There we go. And then right back to the starting point like that. And what I'm going to do now is draw a representation of the teeth in here like that. Maybe some curved lines. It doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to make picture perfect tracings of the, of the subject here. In fact, for this sort of design, uh, the imperfections tend to work a little better than uh, a, a precise tracing. You don't want it to look too exact. Okay, so let me go ahead and create a tracing for the tongue over here. 
And as you can see, I filled in the black space of the uh, of the mouth there. Now let me just zoom out and see if there's any more details I need to trace over. It doesn't look like there's any more facial details I need to trace over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through here and start drawing some manual rolling drips coming off of the face like this. I'm draw another drip down here like that. And you want to try to fill this face in with a bunch of different dripping lines. And try not to make them look too alike. Like that right there. Draw this over here. And once you've finished creating your drip lines going through the subject, the next step is to create a new layer. So I'm going to click this button to create another layer. Click OK. And I'm going to click and drag this layer beneath the top layer. So that's in the middle there. In fact, I'm going to double click this layer and rename it to uh, Colors. So we're going to use this. Uh, we're going to use this layer for coloring in the subject, and I'll rename this layer up here to borders. And let me just click on the colors layer again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the smooth stroke from this brush, and I'm going to make the brush a little bigger, and I'm going to change the foreground color up here. I'm going to use a fill color that I'm going to be coloring in the rest of the face with. I'm going to use a shade of pink like this. You can use any color you'd like. For this sort of art, I've noticed that like high contrast, really bright neon sort of colors work. So for, for the face color here, I'm going to use pink. Go ahead and click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to make the brush a little smaller, and I'm going to start coloring in the, uh, the subject here like this. And I'm just going to go through the, through the subject here and color in all of these areas real quick. If it makes your life easier, what you, can, what you can do is what I did here where I used a small fine brush to go around the edges and all the smaller details. And what I'll do now is use a much bigger brush to fill in uh, the rest of this area here. And as you can imagine, this is not the only way. Oops, a little smaller than that. This is not the only way to do this. You could also use the bucket fill tool. You can use, uh, you can create pads and fill it in that way. Whatever is, whatever is easiest for you. I just like using the brush. Now once the subject's face is filled in, I'm going to grab a different color, maybe something like blue, so I can fill in these other areas here, like the sunglasses and the mouth. So I'm going to use like a light shade of blue, something like that. And I'll go through and repeat the same steps. Just go ahead and fill this in with this color. And to fill in these other areas here, like the lips and the gums, I'm just going to use a, a darker shade of this same color here. So I'm going to, whoops, let me grab that original color. And then I'll just make that a little darker. And now I can go ahead and fill in the rest of this area here. All right, so the next step is we're going to create some shot, some shading going along the, uh, the edges of the face here and underneath the drips. So to do that, I'm going to go back to our original color. You can grab the dropper tool and click on that original color and it'll select it there for you. And then I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to make this a little darker like that. Click OK. And now I'll grab the brush and I'll go through here. Let me make the brush a little bigger. I'll just go through here and create some shading like this. Going around the drips like that. And coming down the side of the face over here. Go around underneath the drips over here. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I'll just go through and add this in real quick. And what we could do now is go back to the dropper tool, grab this selection right here, and then make a darker shade of that. And then once again, just go through and add the shading to those areas as well. And once that's done, we can do the same thing now, only with some highlights instead of some shading. So let me go back and grab the uh, dropper tool. I'm going to grab this, the original selection here, this pink, and I'm going to make this a little lighter now because I'm going to add some highlights in here. And I'll grab the brush and I'll go through here just along the inner edges of these drips here and just add some highlights in there like that just to make it stand out a little bit. And once again, I'll just go through the image and add these in real quick. And now I'll go through and do the same thing with the blue color over here. Once again, grab the dropper, grab a selection of that original blue color, click on that, 
to bring it up and then make this a little lighter like that. And then I'll go through and add some highlights in here as well. And we're almost done now. There's one final step that I like to do is you can flip this around and make your brush white and then just go through and add some very subtle white, uh, some white highlights at the peaks of the, uh, the shaded areas. And I found that it gives it just a nice, a nice little popping effect. To, uh, it's, it's a nice finishing touch on the design. So I'll go through and add these, add these in real quick as well. And now that I'm looking at it, it looks like I forgot to add some shading effects to the mouth here. So let me just go in and add that real quick. I'm going to grab this selection here. I'm just going to go in and add some shading to the mouth over here like this. And what we could do now is click on the original subject layer and bring the opacity all the way up to 100%. And as you can see, we are finished. We have completed our grime art effect using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.